All right, welcome back to part two, everybody. We have all of our bits laid out on this nice table. We have our replacement joysticks. They are not exactly like the real deal. They are all plastic. There's no rubber tip like this one has, you see. This one is missing its rubber top. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is just replace it with one of these guys. Right here are our tools. Uh, we have our game bits. So if I can get this to focus, so you can see this very specific kind of gear shape. It's the same for this one, but smaller. And then we have the little tri-wing screwdriver here. So the first thing I'd like to do is work on the GameCube itself because I don't actually know what is wrong with this, if anything. I was able to turn this on, as you saw in the last video, and I did test the controller in the menu, and the joysticks and the buttons seem to all work properly, so the first thing we have to do to really be able to test this controller uh, in full is to mod this to English, because right now it is a Japanese import, it is in Japanese. Hopefully it's not going to be difficult, we'll, we'll find out, I guess. As far as I can tell, everything looks pretty good. Looks like the fan could use a slight clean. I'm wondering what we're going to find inside this thing. I guess all that's left to do is kind of move this stuff out of the way and get started. All right, here we go. Ah. Not too bad on the inside. There is a lot of, it's kind of hard to see in the camera. Well, maybe not. It's very kind of red. Looking in here, it looks like it's a little bit dirty, but not too bad. Let's get a little deeper. All right, we went and grabbed our Phillips head. We got to take off all of these screws around the edges. So let's do that. Went ahead and grabbed some gloves because there is a lot of dark, gunk here. Don't know what that is. All right, so now we have to take the heat sink off, which is a slightly delicate process. You want to kind of push it back and forth slightly until it starts to give a little bit. You can see it's starting to give. And we're just gonna do that while lifting slightly. And everything remains intact. And there it is. So I'm going to set it over here. All right, so this is where we need to be to do our uh, Japanese to English modification. I'm going to use my little screwdriver to kind of point out to you what we need to do. These two things right here, they say R6 and R5. But there's a tiny little black piece for R5 that's bridging these two metal pins. We need to bridge R6 in the same way. It's better seen in this light there. So what we're gonna need to do is find a little wire and we're gonna solder these two points together. But before we do that, I'd first like to clean everything up a bit. There's a lot of dust, a lot of debris, and uh, this thing really needs to be cleaning. So since we're gonna be doing mostly cleaning for now, I'm going to go ahead and take these screws away just to clear some space. 
Now to clean this thing up, uh, I've gotten a few different things to help me with the process. I think the number one most important thing for uh, at least cleaning this circuit board is isopropyl alcohol. And as you can see, it is 99%. Uh, uh, I've read that you want above 90% minimum. You don't want anything lower than that because the inactive ingredient is water and naturally you don't want any water in your circuit board. So brand new toothbrush, some Q-tips, and we just got some good old fashioned paper towels. Gonna move some of this other stuff out of the way so we can really get hands on with this thing. All right, so that looks pretty good so far, on the top of the board at least. I'm gonna take it out and flip it over and see what we got. There is a little bit of space underneath of this thing, so we're gonna find out what's under there. Hopefully nothing any worse than we've already seen. All right, the bottom of the board is much, much cleaner than the top was. The top still looks a little bit dingy, but I don't think there's very much I can do about that. Um, but I can probably clean up this part a little bit. So it's pretty dusty in here. Luckily, that's all it is. I was kind of expecting something worse, like bugs or something like that. Looks like there aren't any, which is great. Good news. So I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is blow this out and then come back and kinda clean the rest of it. So I'll be right back. All right, here it is all blown out. There's still a little bit of dust in there that the compressor couldn't really get, but no problem, because we'll get that with the, the other tools. I just wanna say that in the time that I was gone, all of the isopropyl alcohol has evaporated from the small little dish I used. Just goes to show how effective it is at cleaning electronics. It'll evaporate in absolutely no time at all. All right, I think that's pretty good, much better than it was before. You might notice a few spots here and there, but then again, remember that this is the very bottom of the console, the part you will probably never see. So I think this is definitely good enough for now. Really quick, I just wanna check all these ports, make sure there's no dust in them, and then we'll move on. So there is some dust in here. Gonna get that dust out really quick. All right, those are looking much better than before. Not a lot I can see in this one, pretty good. So uh, I think we're good to go on this. Let's try cleaning this guy again. He's got a lot of dirt on him. I think that looks much better. Let me know what you think. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the heat sink, as you can see. Ooh, so let's get this guy cleaned up. Making our white tablecloth all dirty. Maybe that wasn't the best idea.
That's better at the very least. Good enough for me. Let's set it back down. I'd probably like to put these two little screws somewhere. All right, what's next on the list? Let's take a look at the upper shell. So looks like we could do a little bit of dusting around the outside, but I think most of our work needs to be done right about in here. I'm gonna go blow this out really quick. All right, we blew out most of the dust. So uh, now let's get to scrubbing. Well, I'm not entirely sure the filter did its job. There's a ton of dust in there and the filter is almost clean. So. Uh, really quick, I'll put the little filter back in and then we can carry on. All right, this piece is good. Now let's check out our fan. As you can see, there's quite a bit of dust and debris on our little fan module here. Let's get this guy cleaned up. All right, I'd say that's much better than it was before. All right, there are only two pieces left to look at. The disk drive, which as you can see, has some stuff right there that we can get off. We also have the controller ports and memory card slot portion. This board is pretty clean though. Try and get down in there. I'm gonna go ahead and start with this. Gotta be careful of this. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that this is our reset button because it is right below the reset button. Cool. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and call that good enough. Some of this brown is not coming off, but you can't ever see it anyway, and it's not dust, so that's fine. Now on to the disk drive. Just need a little bit of a scrub maybe. Take a look at this though. Dust all over the place. And this almost looks like rust. Not sure what happened there. Yeah, so it appears that most of the brown on the metal is rust. That's probably not gonna come off for the most part. This is about as clean as this is going to get. As you can see, all of this stuff, that is rust, it's not dust, so I cannot scrub it off or anything like that. This is the little disc reading laser. Uh, we might have to fiddle with that later. Uh, and after we do our mod, of course, we'll see if it can read discs. So we've basically cleaned all of the bits and pieces. So now we can clean up our station and start on the mod. So here's our board. Right there is where we're gonna solder. I have actually never soldered before, so this is gonna be interesting. This is very thin, very thin small wire to bridge those two connectors. Let's go ahead and set this to the side for a second. This is just a plate of steel. Just gonna get acquainted with my soldering iron first. All right, here it is, our soldering iron. Here is uh, some solder. So I'm just gonna let this sit. All right, so let's see, is it ready yet? Oh, seems like the very tip of it isn't quite hot enough, almost. I'm gonna leave it a little longer. The very tip of the soldering iron does not work very well. So looking at our board once again, you can see right here, R6 and R5, we need to bridge R6, those two silver pins. I believe the technique is to coat the small wire in solder before putting it on there. I don't think we're gonna be applying solder directly onto that. So let's try and coat the wire and see what happens. There it is. So what I'm doing is I'm putting some solder on the tip of this, and then we're just gonna kind of run this little wire through. Doesn't really seem to want to that much. 
solder really does not want to stick to this. This is not working. Look at this. Look at the wire right there. And look, it's so small. I'm not really sure how to do this. So I think what we're going to try to do instead of using a small wire, which doesn't seem to want to work, is just trying to bridge that little gap with a tiny blob of solder. I have gotten a different soldering iron. As you can see, it is much smaller. This is very difficult, I will say. Okay, we did something. So I did my best to join those two little connectors. So now I'm gonna put the heat sink back on. We have everything that we need to reassemble, reassembled, and we have the TV turning on here. So if we did this correctly, which I think I did, I got pretty, pretty darn close. If we did it right, we should see the uh, GameCube in English. Here we go. Yo, <laughs> no way. I need this guy. All right, we pressed a button. Well, would you look at that? <laughs> and the calendar is set to 2000. Wow. Okay, so for testing purposes, I got a game that I think works, pretty sure. It's a little bit scratched up, but shouldn't be too bad. Uh, Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX 2. This is a game that I have that I've never really played, so I'm willing to use it for testing purposes. So let's load it up. Beautiful. And uh, let's see what it does. Hmm. Let's try the other disc. I can hear it. Instead of using those other two games, I got another game that is in better condition. Cars, the GameCube game. So, if we pop this in here and shut the lid, what happens? And look at that. Disney Pixar presents Cars. Let's see if we can play it. This is all I've seen so far. Let's see what happens. Yeah, let's start it up. Oh man, would you look at that? Wow, look at that resolution, holy moly. That's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty low res. This is probably not the TV for this. Wow, holy moly. I haven't heard this song in a long time. Let's uh, properly put it back together, huh? And just like that, the Japanese GameCube came all the way to America and got itself fixed right up and is playing one of my favorite games for the GameCube. But there's still something missing, still something we have left to do. I wonder what it could be. All right, everybody, it's the GameCube controller and we gotta replace this joystick. As far as I can tell, that is the only thing wrong with it. So let's get started. This thing is actually a little bit dusty. I think we could clean it up. We're gonna have to take this off. I think it does require a little bit of force. Oh, hardly even any force actually. I'm just gonna go over this a little bit. Let's try and put this new stick on, shall we? Ah. Just really quick, I want to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This does not have a rubber tip at all. But I guess, I guess these do. That's fantastic. 
Luckily, we didn't need to replace this. Here it is, in all of its fully functional glory. Give me that controller. I wanna play some Lego Star Wars. Look at that. Man, this TV is really loud, but it's fine. Oh no! Oh, he's deflecting. So, this actually went a lot better than I expected. I mean, I fully intended to fix it, but I really didn't know if it was gonna work or not. And uh, that's kind of the mindset you have when you order something from Japan and try to fix it. But yeah, let me tell you a little bit about, you know, everything, I guess, the process. I got the controller and the GameCube on eBay, and they were both listed as broken or four parts. So the GameCube controller works perfectly fine. The GameCube now works perfectly fine. Um, what the problem could have been, I know I was uh, adjusting the laser and stuff, but I'm actually not too sure if that was the problem. Because it turns out the two discs that I tried, um, they were, I guess, scratched up and stuff. So I'm not entirely sure if the laser was the problem. And as far as any other expenses, I had to buy the uh, game bit screwdrivers, which is how you open the thing. Um, I had to buy the power cable and the AV cable, which thankfully came together. Uh, we had to find some 99% isopropyl alcohol, which we managed to find at a safe way. The replacement joysticks were probably about five, six dollars or something like that. And I think, you know, it's pretty good. Pretty good deal. Maybe not for the yellow ones, but for the gray ones, it actually worked out. The GameCube power cables, all the stuff that I purchased to do this only cost about like $80. And if you were to try and find a working one of these with all of that together, then you could be paying probably a bit more than that. So yeah, money saved. And uh, now we can have some fun playing some Lego Star Wars and other various titles, Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Okay, that's all for me uh, in front of the blue screen of no signal. All right, signing off.